oh, oh, oh. Forgive me, forgive me. My mic was off. I was just so excited. What up, gentlemen? Gentlemen, if you can hear me right now, put a one in the chat. Let me know. You can hear me loud and clear so we could get this thing started. What up, family? Appreciate y'all being here on this Monday. As you guys can see, it is early in the morning for me. Uh, we are getting ready to get the day started over here. It's Tuesday morning here. I'm pretty sure in the States is still, uh, you know, uh, Monday evening. So it is what it is, man. Shout out to the crypto gang. Shout out to the passport gang. Appreciate y'all being here as always, man. Y'all already know what it is. Let's go family. So I hope you guys had a great weekend, had a great start to your week on Monday. Um, it is what it is, man. Let's go, man. Y'all see how early I be getting up for y'all, man. So, you know, I want to see that reflected in that appreciation. You heard? Let's go, man. So, uh, shout out to BA setting it off with the super chat early. Appreciate you, BA. He said, black couple denied some real estate in, uh, Asian area. Said white judge dismissed lawsuit. Enemies can't deny you from crypto or boycott your portfolio. F them. See, this is what I'm talking about, right? Listen, this is what I'm telling you. At this point, at this juncture, trying to carve something out of the U.S. is stupid. Trying to call something out in the U.S. is stupid. As a melanated man, everything is against you. Your best bet is to get out of that place and build somewhere else. Go to South America. Go to Africa. Go to Southeast Asia. Go and build somewhere there because you are not welcomed in America. You got motherfuckers that's not even native to the, to the land that can deny you um, the ability to get housing. So, and, and, you know, and white supremacy upholds that, but everybody can move into melanated communities. Everybody can get, uh, grants and scholarships that's intended for melanated people. Everybody has access to what we have, right? So, um, so basically, the best thing to do as melanated men is get the hell out of that place. There's nothing for you there. It's not like the BW wants you, the BAW wants you. She doesn't want you. So there's nothing for you in that place. You might as well leave. You might as well go and and go to greener pastures. And guys, there is a wealth of wonderful things out here waiting for you. I'm not going to say it's all sunshine and rainbows, but Gentlemen, it's just, you know, it's better here. That's why we are the crypto gang and the passport gang. This is what we do, man. So, yeah. So that's unfortunate, BA, but that's the reality. That's why when I'm listening to pro-black dudes and they're fighting for this dead, collapsing, uh, you know, uh, you know, so-called civilization known as America, this, this open air, you know, concentration camp. I'm wondering what the hell are they doing? You, you keep making content about how racist and prejudiced the country is. Why don't you use your ability to convince individuals to move to the motherland and build something there? Why don't you convince them to move to various parts of South America and build something there or Southeast Asia and build something there? The Russians are doing it. The Chinese are doing it. The Japanese are doing it, right? So why why are we not doing it? The Indians are doing it. Why are we not doing it, right? Um, shout out to everybody out here because, like I said, there are a number of black businesses here in Thailand, right? So shout out to all of those brothers that came out here to build. They don't have anybody on their back trying to destroy their businesses. As a matter of fact, the government in Thailand they promote and encourage that because that means benefits for their people, right? Because you guys already know the rule is if you start a business here, you have to, for every American you hire, you have to hire three or four Thai people. So 
the the government in Thailand, they love it. They like, look, as long as you taking care of our people, as long as our people are eating, we love for you to have a business here. So you got to get out of that place. And I'm pretty sure that's the rule in all these other countries. I'm pretty sure that's the rule in Africa, right? If you go to the various countries in Africa, I'm pretty sure that's the rule there. If you go to South America, I'm pretty sure that's the rule there as well. They like, listen, as long as we get to eat with you, it's all good. Come on through, start your business, whatever. That's all I, uh, you know, like, uh, unfortunately for a lot of the ladies who unfortunately lost their lives in the Gambia, they were, exp you know, it was some, some people that were native to Africa and they were explaining pretty much, um, if you want to be protected, especially as a woman who are by yourself, you have to take care of people in the neighborhood. You can't just be eating and, you know, watching these people suffer and squalor. So like, so pretty much if you want to build something in these places, you have to take care of the people as well. And that doesn't mean you have to give them money every day or nothing. They basically give them some jobs, Um, you know, give, give back to the community, you know, shit like that. Like if you look out for them, they'll look out for you. Right. But you can't just be rolling up in their neighborhoods with motherfucking Lamborghinis and Mercedes Benzes and getting out with hundred dollar suits, you know, thousand dollar suits and shit. And you just walking past them like they ain't shit. You know, basically it, where, where you can help out, help out. They're not saying, you know, give us, give us everybody in the neighborhood a paycheck or something like that. It's just, yo, you know, you eating. You know, give us something. Don't just, you know, don't just uh, look at us and treat us like shit. Like, you know, show show us that you, you know, you you appreciate the the quality of life here or something like that. So, uh, basically, some of the people native to those areas were saying, unfortunately, you got desperate, hungry people that see you shining. You know, and these women were unprotected they living by themselves so they came to get it because they hungry you know like you're not taking care of anybody there you you know you you walking around with iphones and and macbook pros and these these people would have to work for 15 20 years to even get the basic model of that you know they they thirsty, they hungry. The same thing with Colombia, right? You you know, unfortunately, a dude lost his life because he was wearing a gold chain. And it's like these people, you know, um coming from Venezuela and stuff like that. They 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 hungry, they thirsty, they need something. You know, don't just walk past them and and you know what I'm saying? Like, so you know, they thirsty, they coming for the for the robbery, because you know, the what you got can feed them for a year. You know, your iPhone can feed them for a year. They like, now nah, I'm coming to get that. So, you know, that's that's basically what it is, right? But um, we went off on a tangent with that. But I said all of that to say, listen, when you find yourself starting these businesses and stuff like that outside of the country, which is very much welcomed, definitely take care of the people, right? Make sure you give them jobs. Make sure you know, you, you do something nice for them. Show them that you, you're thankful for them. You appreciate them. That's what's going to take you far. Though That's going to get the people to protect you. If you take care of them, they'll take care of you, right? So that is what's, uh, that's basically what's, um, why business for black men is more lucrative and profitable outside of the U.S. because you don't have people on your back. You don't have people trying to steal what you have. You know what I'm saying? You don't have white supremacy trying to stop you. You don't have the police um racially profiling you here. You know? So you got you got us started today, BA. You got us started today, BA. I'm telling you. So that's why I always promote listen, you got to get the hell out of that place. I'm telling you, you're going to be happier. You're going to feel freer. It's just, you know, I mean, out here, I already told y'all so many times. I'm, I was walking down the street yesterday. I saw a brother. We started talking to each other like we knew each other for years, and we didn't know each other from anywhere. And we just, you know, basically talking about how we like it here and all of these different things. You know, 
We basically in these far off lands, black men actually care about each other. They're happy to see one another. It's not like they're in that hellish prison where when you see black men, you already got your hand on your on your gun because you don't know if this dude is trying to come at you and y'all sizing each other up outside of that place. We're happy to see one another. We show each other love. Now, don't get me wrong. It's some idiots that still have that American, you know, uh, mindset when they leave the country. But for the most part, brothers are happy to see one another. So you don't deal with the black. There's no black on black crime or violence out here. There's no black on black crime or violence. And when we go to these other countries, we're actually happy to see one another. You know what I'm saying? So. That's why I say get out of that place, get out of that prison. They're letting you know in every way they don't want you here. And this is what kills me about the so-called pro-black dudes who want you to basically uh, remain in the problem. They want to keep talking about how racist the government is. They want to keep talking about how racist the political structure is. They want to keep talking about how you're being discriminated against. They want to keep talking about how the police are racially profiling you. But nobody wants to talk about the solution, which is this cryptocurrency and your passport to get the fuck out of there. Why nobody want to talk about that? How are you going to have thousands of people watching you? Just so you can give them fear porn. Yeah, everybody's racist. Everybody's against you. We already know that. What is the solution? How do we do that? And don't tell me building houses in people's fucking basements. Everything black people have ever tried to build has been destroyed. I just showed y'all yesterday how they were flooding towns, how they were uh, looting and, and, and destroying towns, burning people, lynching people. But why? Because they built something out of nothing. Basically, after slavery, when the Reconstructionists ever began, they left black people to die. That was what they wanted you to do. They wanted you to die. So imagine their surprise and their anger when they came back around and they saw that black people had built thriving cities, that they had financial institutions, educational institutions, higher learning institutions. They had hospitals. They had schools. They had uh, transportation systems. They had all of these different things. You would think that they was like, good, let them stay in that little corner. But that shit kept them up at night. You have to imagine that because the whole time the the narrative was black people are inferior. They're stupid. They have the, the mind of Neanderthals, even though they are the, ne the Neanderthals. They come from the mountains. They come from the caves. Right. But that was the narrative. We were too stupid. We were ignorant. We weren't capable of anything. So can you imagine the anger that comes with coming back? later and finding out they built an entire town that is thriving, that they don't need you, that all of the skills that they were forced to learn in slavery, they're now using it to build their own economy. That shit kept them up at night. That's why they burnt and looted towns. That's why they flooded towns. This is going on from, from the beginning, the Reconstructionist era. Up until today, how many black people have created businesses and then they were destroyed? How many things were stolen from black people? How many times do black people create something and immediately they are brought out? You think that those black people want to sell their legacy? You think they really want to sell what they created? Or you think they are given an offer that they can't refuse? And if you don't believe that, ask the person that created world star hip hop or ask the dude that created the um what was that Jamaican uh shop that that chain restaurant that the the black dude made in Florida what the hell was that um ask him they were both taken out why cuz they didn't want to sell a business you think Dr Dre wanted to sell his beats headphones empire he was making hundreds of millions of dollars a year 
You can't build in that place. They do. This white supremacy is designed to destroy everything you build. You can't build in that place. You got to get the fuck out of there. B.A., you got me started, man. I'm going a, I'm to a chill now. I'm going to chill because you got me started, bro. You got me started. Let's go. Harold Jackson said, here's another gem for you guys. He said, soul will be the next reparations play. He said, it's receiving more fees than ETH. He says, I believe because of the use of it. He says, $650 billion at minimum will be market cap. He said to, uh, let me see, one T. Uh, this one trillion this uh this run. Oh, you think you think it's gonna go to one trillion this run? Oh, mm. okay, Harold Jackson. I see you. I see you. I see you, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you. My man Goku 215 is up in here. He says, salute to everyone here. He says, Hope we are uh all I said, uh he says, uh salute to everyone here. He says, Hope we all make it. After this bull run, God bless. Yeah, man. Listen, we are going to make it. They have to dump over uh, fifteen trillion dollars into this market. You guys are going to make it, no doubt. And by the way, if you are a Patreon member, you already family, so you get to skip all the red tape bullshit. You present your business idea to the council, which I will create. You 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 present your business idea to the council. And all the members decide if that business idea is worth funding. So you come up with a business plan. You come to the council. You present your idea. We decide decide if it's worth funding. This is what we are building. This is what we are creating. And guys, we are literally going to be international. We already are international, but we're going to be international. So if you come to us and you're like, listen, I want to create this building in the, the or create this business in the Philippines or in Africa, right? Or in Colombia or in Brazil, right? We, 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 we there with all of that. We there with all of that. We here for all of that family. So yeah. So yeah, when this happens, we're, we're building, man, we're creating our own right? There's nothing left for us in that place. Let's go, man. Let's go. My brother Red Star is here. He says, what's the worst scam they tried since you've been there? Meaning uh, here in um, um, Thailand? Uh, let me know what, what you mean. Let me know what you mean, family. Um, you're saying like they try to scam, scam here in Thailand? Like, uh, you know, if you talk about Thailand, the biggest the biggest scammers is the three oh fours, right? They they trying to hustle you to death. Um, they they trying to get as much money out of you. They try to give you sob stories, right? Um, but as far as everything else, the hustle is um, you know, it's just like anywhere else in the world. You got the panhandlers that that have way more money than you have, but you know, they got they got this whole, you know, elaborate setup. Right. So you got the the ladies, you know, what what will happen is you'll have an old lady out there, you know, look dirty and disheveled, you know. And of course, the tourists feel bad for her. They give her money, but they have more money than you have or they'll put kids out there. Right. Because everybody feels bad for the kids. So you give the kids money. It's a whole you know, elaborate system and setup. That's, you know, like that. Then, you know, another scam you might have is, and this is like Indians that live out here. They got this setup where they try to make you uh, self-conscious. So they'll run up on you. Like some dude ran up on me and he was like, yo, you got, you got uh, black lines under your eyes. Yo, you need to get, you know, I don't know, black seed oil, or you need to get this powder or whatever. And they want you to go with them to the store and kick out some bread or whatever to pay for it or whatever. So they, you know, or they'll tell you that you, yo, you, you know, um, to get your belly flat, you need to do this and you know, shit like that. Right. So that's, that's the Indian hustle that I seen out here. Uh, what's, what's another hustle besides the panhandling and the Indian hustle? Um, those those are the only ones that that I have seen or um they they've tried to pull on me. 
um since I've been here. Um I the only other one is the the 304s out here, right? Um they they you know, they trying to hustle you, they trying to give you sob stories, they trying to take as much money off of you as possible. You know, um, is it, it, you know, that's the same all over the world, though. You know, these you know, these chicks see you got some bread, they trying to make they trying to get as much of it as possible, right? And um, you know, you 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 will be able to tell it's a hustle, right? So those are the only three that I know of, right? Um, I don't I don't really know of much else. If you know of any more, tell me. But I just know about the panhandling, I know about where the dudes try to play on your 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 ego and your self esteem. Oh, you got black marks under your eyes. Oh, to get your belly flat, you need to get this. And and of course the three hundred fours. Those are the ones that I know. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's go. So so that's that's my answer to that, bro. That's my answer. Now, if y'all know some other hustles, um, let me know. Let me know. Right. Okay. So. I, we went off on a tangent there. We went off on a tangent there. So, um, you know, we just we just talk about getting the hell out of, uh, you know, what you call it. Um, hold on. I see you, uh, Justin Harrison. Um, it's interesting that you brought that up because I'm actually going to be talking about that today. Right. I'm actually going to be talking about that today. So it's, it's very interesting that you brought that up. We will be talking about that, um, about Kronos and stuff. So we will be talking about that because uh, he is featured. The CEO is featured in one of the videos that we're going to be discussing today. Right. So with that, let's uh, before we get into everything, let's go ahead and get into live coin watch. Right, and take a look at what's going on here. Okay, so as you guys know, <clears throat> the market has done, I guess, a correction. If if you want to call it that, you know, if you want to say that the market is down, I guess you can. Uh, of course, me coming from a you know twenty thousand dollar Bitcoin. Um, to a sixty something thousand dollar Bitcoin, I don't see it as going down. Maybe it's a little correction. I, I you know, I, you know, however you guys want to look at that, but I don't see the market is down. You see, we got Solana at two hundred dollars and it's holding strong. Binance is at five hundred and fifty two dollars. Y'all see what's going on? The coins are are still holding strong. Um, my belief is that somebody tried to, somebody's trying to manipulate Bitcoin by, you know, selling to somebody else or something like that, you know, like they do in the stock market, but it's not working because people are, like I say, you see the title of this, this is the last train leaving to financial freedom. So you're not shaking people. What you are actually teaching them is to buy the dips. So. If you thought that people were going to bail out and just throw away their positions, you are sorely disappointed. It's the same thing with what they're trying to do with AMC. They are trying to keep it as low as possible, hoping that people will jump out of it. The problem is we are so emotionally unattached to AMC. We're so unemotionally unattached to the money that we put in it that we can wait for as long as it takes. It costs us nothing to hold our positions. It costs them everything, but it costs us nothing, right? So they are trying to scare people who are not even paying attention. Can you imagine somebody trying to, to uh, you know, do things behind your back and you don't even see it? That's what it's like for us with AMC. And I think that that's what they were trying to do here on the crypto market. They were trying to scare you into giving up your positions or selling your positions. They got, you know, they're trying to scare you. Oh, Bitcoin's going back down to 20,000. It's going to 12,000. We don't get scared of that. We actually get excited because if you can get Bitcoin to go back to 12,000, that means every coin that we missed on the way up, we now have a new buying opportunity to get more. 
So all you do is make us excited about it. We're not emotional. And that's what is killing them. They, you, you have to imagine their faces when they look and they say, fuck, man. We put the price down. They just buy more. We're not emotional, man. The, the old investor, the old retail investor has died a long time ago. We're not emotional about this shit. We get excited. You're talking to a different breed of people, man. It's over for that, man. It's over for fooling us into believing that, you know, the boat is sinking. That's done. But you guys see here, you see these prices, man. They're beautiful, right? They're still up. They're still moving, right? Even with them being down, they're still up, right? We're getting staking rewards off of them anyway, so it doesn't matter if they go down, right? And as a matter of fact, I know a lot of you are secretly wishing that the market goes down so you can buy these coins at even cheaper prices. Put a fire emoji if I'm telling the truth about that. I know a lot of y'all are secretly, 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 secretly wishing and hoping that the market goes down so you guys can get in at cheaper prices. I know that that's what y'all thinking. Because secretly, I am thinking that. Secretly, I am thinking that. If I can wake up, if I can wake up and find that um, the market has went down substantially and I can get in for the low, family, I don't even have to tell you, man. I don't even have to tell you what I'm going to do. I don't even have to tell you. Let's go, family. Let's go. So just had to take a look at that real quick. So let's get into this, man. Let's get into this, man. So, guys, I need y'all to understand that the world is against you, that the system is collapsing and they need to keep you distracted and they need you to they need to keep you unfocused. I need you to understand what's going on. Um. Biden, as you guys know, Biden knows that he's losing the election dramatically. He knows that basically he is a one term president. He knows that that is what's happening. Right. Um, and he is lashing out because of that. But I want you to understand that even in that, even in that, there's something that he will never do. So let me bring up this video for you guys real quick. And um, we'll, we'll go through it together. Um, I want you to understand that this is one of the reasons, one of the main reasons that you gentlemen need to get the hell out of that place because it is a horrible, racist place. And um, it, is, it is dead set against you. Hold on one second. Uh oh. One second. All right. Here we go, guys. Uh oh. One second. It's not technical difficulties. It's just I need to switch the speaker. Hold on one second. Here we go. So I'm not doing the black ram. I'm just switching the speaker. All right. Here we go. How bad have polls gotten for Joe Biden? Well, according to new reporting, he is angry to the point of shouting and swearing at aides during a January meeting about low poll numbers in Michigan and Georgia. This is according to a lawmaker who told this to NBC News on condition of anonymity. So NBC reported yesterday that Biden was seething after being told that states he narrowly won in 2020 are slipping out of his graphs due to his handling of the crisis in Gaza. So guys, two things here, two things here. He is upset because he's losing those states. But at the same time, he will not do a goddamn thing for black people in those states 
to to in, entice them to want to vote for him. And he's not doing shit for the Palestinians who basically feel that their people are being eliminated off the face of the earth in Israel or or in that area they call Israel because it's really, you know, basically it was originally Palestine before they showed up in the 1940s, right? So he is like, I'm very angry that I'm losing these states, but if I have to do the right thing and, 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 and basically demand a ceasefire, or if I have to do anything for black people, then fuck it. I'd rather lose. I'd rather lose the election than to do any of those things. But he's mad, though. He's mad that he's losing. But when they say, okay, you probably need to do something for the black community so they would be incentivized to, to, to vote for you. He's like, fuck them. I'd rather lose. When the Palestinians did a um, non-committed vote, because they're basically saying you are supplying weapons to the very group of people that are eliminating our people over there. He's like, fuck them too. But at the same time, this old senile bastard is like, why am I losing? He doesn't understand why he's losing. Let's go, man. Let's go. Okay, so it looks like XRP is, is going up. So, you know, we'll see what's going on with that. But yeah, so this is what's what's happening, man. This this dude is like, I don't want to lose, but if I have to do anything to entice black people to vote for me, then fuck it. I'd rather lose. If I have to do anything to encourage the Palestinians in America to vote for me, then fuck it. I'd rather lose. That's what's going on here. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. Biden's 38% approval rating compares quite poorly to the last three presidents to lose their reelections, including Jimmy Carter, who had a 43% approval rating, George H.W. Bush, who had a 39% approval rating, and Donald Trump, who had a 48% rating in 2020, which is 10 points higher than Biden's current numbers. Business Insider also reported that Biden has resisted in conversations with aides, trying to prevent him from going public or going to public events where he could misspeak or trip up. Me so you guys, you guys hear that, right? The aides will not allow him to speak in public. Why? Because at some point, you know, Biden is going to call you a nigga. You know, what's wrong? I, I, I. You know, I I got a nigger as the vice president, even though she's not black. But he'll say something crazy like that because his dementia has the better of him. So he doesn't have any filters. So he probably say some crazy shit in the White House. And they like, nah, we can't let this motherfucker go in public. You know what I'm saying? The more he goes in public, the, the worse it gets. He did the State of the Union. I'm pretty sure they had him doped up and they had somebody in his ear. But I'm pretty sure he say some crazy shit. So let's go. You know? Here we go. Changing voters and changing minds has also been made more challenging by persistent protests that have repeatedly disrupted Biden events. Now, as we reported earlier this month, Biden is avoiding college campuses. And the Washington Post covered the persistent ceasefire protests again today noting that Vice President Kamala Harris's motorcade faced calls of Genocide Joe and Butcherer Biden as they waved free Palestine and save Gaza signs, and that her event itself was interrupted as well. Damn. So, so you see, they are collapsing, right? It's falling apart. And guys, basically what I'm saying is this is why crypto is your reparations. This is why crypto is your last train leaving. Because if you depend on them, you are going to lose. Because rather than do what needs to be done to secure his reelection, he is basically saying, fuck them. I would rather lose the election than to do what I should do as a president. That is what he is saying, 
right? Shout out to the pimped out platypus. He said Biden is the political version of the baby mama terrorist. <laughs> Let's go, man. Let's go, right? So, yeah, man. So he they would rather lose. But I want to show you something. This is this this is another reason that I brought this up, right? Check this out. I want you to understand. This is another reason that you guys need to break up with America. This is another reason why you need to walk away from that place. Crypto is your reparations. It is your savior. It is what is going to keep you from, you know, poverty. And it is going to bring you financial freedom. Check this out, gentlemen. This is Bill Maher. Let's see what he thinks, right? Uh oh, hold on. One second. He's not because he's doing a bad job, but because many Americans like living with their heads in the toilet. Let's take a listen. I've been thinking a lot lately about a puzzle many are struggling with. Why are Biden's approval ratings so low when things are generally pretty good? Now, of course, there are problems. America is a big place, but wages are rising. Unemployment is negligible. The stock market is soaring. We somehow brushed off both the Trump presidency and the pandemic. Yes, inflation persists for a lot of things, but, you know, an actual good, nice-sized TV now costs 60 bucks. Who gets credit for that? We've got next-day shipping, stuffed crust pizza, legal weed, GPS, and porn on the phone. <laughs> Cheer the fuck up. Okay. So your man just said, you know, we are stupid because we think that the economy is poor. Hold on one second. I should have had this up uh, beforehand, but hold on. Okay. So. He says that we need to cheer the fuck up, right? He says everything is good. You could buy a TV for 60 bucks, cheer the fuck up. Now, I want you to understand who's saying this. This is Bill Maher's net worth. Of course, he can cheer the fuck up. He's worth $140 million. But tell that to the people who are living on the streets. Tell that to the soldiers who fought for this country and they living on the streets. Tell that to the soldiers who can't get into the VA hospitals, but the migrants can. Tell them to chill the, cheer the fuck up. Tell those families who can't afford to pay their rent and got kicked out of their homes and are living in their car. Tell them to cheer the fuck up. Shit ain't so bad. Of course you can say that with $140 million in net worth. But tell that to the people that's working two and three jobs. Tell that to the people who are struggling to, to make it through the day. We dealing with real fucking life and you sitting up there giving this stupid ass commentary on shit you know nothing the fuck about. What do you mean cheer the fuck up? People are losing their jobs. They're losing their homes. They're getting kicked out of their apartments. Y'all see Tyson Foods just laid off 1,200 employees to hire 53,000 um, migrants, I believe. I believe, hold on, I'm going to go look for that shit. He's telling us to cheer the fuck up. People dealing with real life shit. Um, hold on. Tyson fools, they laid off. Hold on. All right, here we go. I'm gonna download this one second. He, this you, you hear this guy, man? Do you hear? This is why you guys need to get the fuck out of that place. Crypto is your reparations. And your saving grace, you need to get the fuck out of that place. You need to get out of there because it is a prison. 
You need to get out of that place. Hold on one sec. Let me pull this up for you guys. Business, man. Jesus Christ. So this motherfucker, hold on. Let me let me take this down. This motherfucker is worth a hundred and forty million dollars, and he's telling you to cheer the fuck up. Let's go. Pimped out platypus said Biden did something for us. He gave us a MF in study. He said, why ain't you ninjas happy? <laughs> he said, are y'all even black? Exactly. Exactly. Right? We got to study for reparations. Meanwhile, Israel is getting money and weapons. Uh, Ukraine is getting money and weapons. The migrants are getting money and housing and cell phones and health care and jobs. But your black ass, you got to study. And he doesn't understand why you don't want to vote for his ass. Get out of here, man. Nine Ether Man says, Bill Maher said Governor Newsom should be president. You can't take him serious. You, you, you can't take uh, him seriously. Exactly. Right? Can't take him seriously. Exactly. Right? Shout out to my man's James Young. What up, James Young? What up, bro? How you doing, man? I hope everything is good. I hope your portfolio is looking good, man. What is up? He says, the pimped out platypus. Don't forget, we got Juneteenth. He said, we should be dancing in the streets. Exactly. And don't forget Hip Hop Month. Don't forget Hip Hop Month. We winning out here. Oh, 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 oh. Don't forget the Crown Act. The Crown Act, right? Uh, jobs can't discriminate against you because of your hair. Right. So don't forget that we winning out here, man. We got Juneteenth. We got hip hop month. We got the crown act. So what, what are y'all complaining about? Right. We got a study for reparations. We winning out here. We winning out here. Them, them, them Asian dudes, they got that stupid stuff. They got legal protection under the law. If you attack them, that's a hate crime. That's stupid stuff. We got Juneteenth. We got the real stuff. We got Juneteenth. We got hip hop month. Right, we winning out here. Let's go, man. Now we got our uh, affirmative action status taken away. We got that taken away, but that's a small price to pay for a reparation study, don't y'all think? Right. So, so basically, getting protection and not being discriminated against, and basically having um allotted spots for black people so they don't get discriminated against. That's stupid. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. So my man James says, still busy as hell, but doing well. That's what I'm talking about, man. Glad to hear it. Hope that portfolio is looking nice right now, my brother. Glad to see you, man. It's been a long time, man. And you've been rocking with us for 35 months. Wow, man. That that right there, man. That's That's right there. That's what's up, man. Glad to see you, brother. Glad to see you here. Let's go, man. Let's go right so yeah man so so this is what i'm talking about so let me bring this up for you guys hold on one second this is this is this is what he's telling you to cheer up about this is what this dude is telling you to cheer up about Or if you try and Tyson laying off 1,200 workers after closing its pork factory in Perry, Iowa, only later to announce 52,000 jobs for migrants. The company's excuse, migrants are getting the jobs that Americans don't want. A human resources executive for the company telling Bloomberg the migrants have been, quote, very loyal. They've been uprooted. And what they want is stability. What they want is a sense of belonging. Let's bring in Fox and Friends weekend. So what are they saying to you? They're basically saying, fuck you. Right? The, the, the migrants are better than you. They're loyal. They've been uprooted from their homes. And they want stability. What they want is a sense of belonging. But these motherfuckers want you to pay taxes. They want to give your shit to illegal aliens, but they want you to pay taxes. They hired 80,000 IRS agents with guns to come after you 
But how the fuck you going to pay taxes if you don't have a fucking job? They're taking your jobs and replacing you with migrants. But you got to pay taxes? Man, get the fuck out of here. If my understanding was no taxation without representation, and I think that that's the moment that we are at now. You got um, American citizens sleeping on the street. You got American soldiers who fought for this country living on the streets, no access to health care. They want you to pay taxes, though. They take your money. They send it to Ukraine. They send it to Israel to do unspeakable things. And they want you to pay for all of it. Meanwhile, you don't get shit. You get fired from your job. That's what you get. All of a sudden, the ways that you used to make money, the gig economy, is being taken away from you. But they want you to pay taxes. I'm trying to tell you, man. Y'all see what's going on out here. They hired 52,000 migrants. They laid off 1,200-something workers and hired 52,000 migrants. Just so you know. Again, you can try. You can try to stay in America if you want. You can listen to these so-called pro-black dudes and, and, and complain about how the white man is trying to keep you down if you want. Or you can invest in the future and get the fuck out of there. Right? Let's go. Mr. 18 Wheeler is in the building. He says, should I stake on Atomic Wallet or Exodus or both? You should stake on both, right? You should uh, never keep crypto in one place. You should have different wallets just in case some bullshit happens. But um, you should stake on both, right? Um, you should You should have multiple decentralized exchanges that you stake on, right? So both, family. So I hope that answers the question, Mr. 18 Will Appreciate that super chat. Good, sir. Let's go, right? So yeah, man. So this is the bullshit that they bring you. This is what they bring you, right? So let's go. Another thing. What are they trying to do? They trying to steal your money on the stock market. Y'all remember uh, Kathy Wood she basically dropped her NVIDIA stock, right? Um, and it went up to, what, $500, $600? And they was trying to get you in. You see everybody talking about AI, AI, AI. You need to get in on this AI. You need to be a part of this AI. And guys, you already know, then you're not invited to the party. You are just the bag holder, Right. So they want you to get in. They want to see retail come in so they can leave you holding the bag. And this video, I believe, is going to prove what I'm saying, right? Um, <laughs> uh, hold on. I see Mab, I see you, Mab 1914. He said, oh, he ain't homeboy, boys, Watkins, burn passport and be a stepdad. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I don't want none of that, right? Let's go. All right, here we go. S&P 500, as well as many of the major averages, really moving to the upside this year. The S&P up more than 7%. A lot of this rally driven by just a handful of tech stocks, very similar to the story that we were talking about last year. So is the market nearing bubble territory? And how should you position yourself ahead of that? We want to bring in Paul Dietrich. He is the chief investment strategist with B. Riley Wealth. Paul, it's good to see you here. And you lay it out. Pretty straightforward in your most recent note, you say that people need to be aware of the fact that we are near the bubble territory. The stock market bubble is about to burst, is exactly how you put it. So we've been seeing this dramatic run up in stocks right now. When you say it's about to burst, what's that going to look like? What should investors be doing today? So you see that? The the media was trying to get you to invest in AI stocks. And now you have this guy telling you 
yo, this shit is about to burst. You see how that works? They basically tell, yo, it's about the burst. What were they trying to do? They were trying to get you guys to be the bag holders. So, that, yo, you better get into this AI stock. You're missing out on money. And then you go and you put your money in NVIDIA. And then all of a sudden, the stock starts crashing. You lose all your money. Why? Because these dudes made you a bag holder. And this dude is sounding the alarm on that. Right? Like, yo, this shit is going to crash very soon. And of course it has to because the U.S. is running out of money. There has to be a correction. There has to be a correction. Right? Let's keep it going. Well, I was managing money back uh, during the dot-com uh, bubble. And um, I can tell you that the stock market can go up. You know, even though there are no fundamentals, uh, it's all momentum uh, for a long period of time. But when it does burst, it usually bursts quickly. And so that's uh, what we're looking at. I, I, I've analyzed the stock market from just about every traditional uh, analysis that, that you can do to determine whether it's overvalued or undervalued. And... Uh, uh, every single indicator seems to tell us that we're in a historic, historic bubble. Uh, but <laughs> you hear that? You hear that? Everything is telling him that we're in a bubble, but these dudes are trying to get you to buy. And that's what it is. The media was being used to get you to throw your money away because they think that retail investors are stupid. They think we got into AMC and GME because we're dumb. When the reality is we know what is going to happen with those stocks. So they thought, oh, if we throw this in their face and we show them that it went up to $500, they'll get excited and think that they're about to be rich. But we already know you're trying to make us bag holders. We know that AMC and GME is one of the greatest things that we ever did with our money because you are going so hard to suppress it. The, the AMC is the only, basically, I've Cinemark filed for bankruptcy and it's doing better than AMC. Let that sink in for a second. Cinemark filed for bankruptcy. That means that they went on legal documents and reported that they do not have any money to maintain the business, to keep the business afloat. They didn't have any good projections. And even with that, they're doing way better than AMC. Meanwhile, AMC is making all kinds of profit from the movies, from the concession stands, from the products in the stores, from the fact that they got over 3.8 million AMC investors who still have their money in it. And AMC is, is basically at $4. How the fuck is that possible? It's because they know that we already won that fucking game. And they're hoping that if they keep stalling for time, we'll get tired and we'll jump out. But they don't understand we're not even emotionally invested in that shit right now. We, we're not even thinking about it. That money's gone in our head, so we don't even think about it. I don't even look at my accounting anymore. You know how many people forgot they even have those accounts? They are fucked. But they're trying to get you to invest in a sinking ship. Like somebody, who's that in the chat that said 1929? Um, you are absolutely correct. Guys, the reality is 1929 was not a fluke. That was the government basically stealing the money from the citizens. They basically in the 1920s, the citizens was like, why the fuck can't I live like the wealthy? Why can't I be like these movie stars? Why can't I do that? I'm about to invest in the stock market. And, and of course, times were good. 
But the government was like, we need worker bees. We need slaves. So they crashed the fucking market. They crashed the market. That's what they did. They wanted a correction. They needed a correction because they needed people to be worker bees. You know what happened after the stock market crash? People were fighting to get jobs. They, they were happy to work after that point. See, what was happening before it, people were pretty much saying, oh, man, why do I have to work? Why do I got to get a nine to five? They were looking at the celebrities. And they're like, why, why can't I do that? Why can't I live like that? Why can't I be famous? So they went to the stock market because that was their best hope of getting financial freedom. And then the government was like, too many of these motherfuckers are investing. Let's crash this shit. You take all their money. Now they're fighting you to get a job. That's what they're trying to do now. They're trying to get you to throw your money in these AI stocks so they can crash this fucking market and you will be fighting to get a job. You'll be happy to be an employee. That's what they're trying to do, right? Let's go, guys. How long it can go, uh, that's a good question uh, because it certainly went on longer than I expected back uh, in 2000, 2001. And uh, you look at things like price earnings ratio. I mean, we haven't seen a gap between the, the PE for the S&P 500 and the price of the S&P 500 since uh, the internet bubble uh, back uh, in, in 2000. And, um, and then you look at something like the, uh, the 200-day moving average, and there's a 13% gap, which is historic. Uh, that's what the that that's what the S and P 500 would have to go back to. Uh, it would have to drop 13 percent from right now uh, to get back to its 200-day uh, moving average. Uh, you look at other indicators. Did you hear that? <clears throat> He's basically saying the level that the stock market is at right now cannot be sustained. It has to drop 13 percent to get back to what it normal average high was. It has to drop 13% to get back to its normal average high. That means that the market is inflated and it can't sustain itself. Basically, this is, this is the reality of it. This is the reality of it. The wealthy are the only ones that are playing in the stock market right now. They are the only ones playing in the stock market right now. They know that the market has the crash. So what they want to do is they want to dump it on you. So basically, they know that we have woke up. We understand that the stock market is a fucking scam. It's a fucking Ponzi scheme. And we want nothing to do with it. And they are basically trying to entice us to get back in because right now it's a sharks eating other sharks. So they're trying to get retail investors to come back in so they can eat from them. But everybody already sees the scam and the Ponzi scheme and the bullshit that they're doing with AMC and GME. We won that game a long time ago. But look at all the bullshit they did to cheat. And the government allowed it to happen. So we now understand that the stock market is a fucking scam and the government is in on it. That as long as rich people are stealing from you, everything is right with the world. But the moment you learn the game and you start winning, holy shit. The whole system is screwed up. Now they change the rules on you. Oh, yeah, that was right on Tuesday, but today is Wednesday. So the rules are different now. So now they're trying to get you to throw all your money in AI just so they could crash the fucking market and have you looking stupid. You see all these CEOs taking money out. You see them uh, liquidating assets. Why are they doing that? 
They're trying to get you to hold the bag. That's what they're doing. Let's go. A sow of seed is in the building. He said, thank you for your research. And most of all, your conspiracy facts. <laughs> Let's go, man. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Let's go. Right? Um. So, yeah, man. Um. It is what it is. Right? <clears throat> Hold on. Let me see if, if you guys uh sent me some cash apps um oh okay y'all don't y'all don't care about me enough to send me no cash apps all right all right let's get back to the show let's go right so yeah man so this is what they're trying to do they are trying to uh get you guys to foolishly invest in the stock market again even after they done robbed you with AMC and GME you guys should have millions of dollars right now, but they are doing that bullshit. Now, the good thing is they can't uh, sustain this for much longer because they've been doing this for years. It's been costing them money. They doing all kinds of shit to stay afloat. And eventually this market has to give out. But um, my greatest fear is how they're going to handle the fallout because once you turn around and you see these stocks start running and going parabolic basically i feel like the government might try to intervene and do some underhanded backhanded bullshit and steal from us again because basically that's what it is right shout out to will the thrill appreciate your brother he said that's why i pulled all my money from the stock market hey listen we don't we don't blame you as long as you ain't take it out of like GME and AMC um because we we still waiting for the end result on that. Listen, everybody in that play they willing to let that shit go to absolute zero. I would rather that shit go to zero before I pull my money out that bitch. They going to have to pay me. Fuck that. I'm waiting for that market to crash so these dudes can pay me what they owe. Bottom line. Bottom line. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, Mab 1914, 80,000 agents, bro, to come get money from you so they could give it to Israel, right? Yeah, man, so I had to talk about that, I had to talk about that, right? So guys, listen, man, they are doing everything in their power um, to, to uh, keep you from financial freedom. But before we get into that, man, I want y'all to understand, listen, um, I am not a financial advisor, and this is not financial advice, and I would never dream of telling you what to do with your money. I will only tell you what I'm doing with my uh, money and say you should probably, um, you know, I would, I would say um, you should pretty much look into or do your due diligence or do your research or something like that, right? So that that is what, um, you know, I would tell you to do. I would never tell you how to spend your money or anything like that. But with that said, with that said, um, I would tell you. Hold on one second. Uh, let me let me look for this. Let me look for this. One second, I'm gonna pull this up for you guys. One second. Hold on. Let me bring this up. With that said, gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. All right. Hold on. Here we go. I would advise you to look into these coins. Okay. I would invite I would advise you gentlemen to look into these coins. I can't tell you what to do with your money. I can't tell you what to do with your money, but I would tell you to look into these coins, do your research, do your due diligence, right? Investigate, do some research on these coins, and and if you come to a favorable decision, I would ask you to invest in something, right? Do not put 
your life savings. Do not put the kid's college fund. Don't put the mortgage. Don't put the car note. Don't put the rent money. Put the money that you're going to bullshit with. The money you was going to take that 304 out on a date with. That money you was going to go to the strip club with. The money you was going to go buy those Jordans that you don't need because you already got 15 pairs of those. That's the money you should take and put into this. Now, again, I would not tell you what to do with your money. I would not tell you how to spend your money. I would never dream of doing that. I would never dream of doing that. But I think that you need to um, invest or think about looking to invest in casino or gambling cryptocurrencies. Why am I saying that? Because, gentlemen, even though I do not enjoy hearing this, even though I do not enjoy hearing this, gentlemen, what America is doing is trying to turn its citizens into degenerate gamblers, right? One second. I should have picked that up too. Super Bowl. Um, one second. Let's go. Even though, um, here we go. Yeah, let me let me pull this up real quick. One second, one second. Listen, you guys, you hear me? Y'all need to be looking at gambling coins because something is going on. Something is going on. And I think the government is trying to listen. You 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 see the video games, they got these loot boxes and all this bullshit on uh NBA 2K and uh battlefront star wars and and madden and and fifa and all these different things um what's the other one fortnite and all of this shit they got loot boxes and and all of this shit where you know basically uh these kids are are basically being raised to be degenerate gamblers right so it's is this is something that I believe that you guys need to start paying attention to and you should start, uh, you know, focusing on because I think this is going to be a big money play. Again, not a financial advisor. It's not financial advice. <clears throat> but I think y'all should look at coins that deal with casino gambling, stuff like that. Right. Right. Let me bring this up for you guys. I think they are trying to turn society into a bunch of degenerate gamblers, man. Let's go. Check this out. It's the Wild West. You see, I have a pretty good idea of what I want in the cigarette. The tobacco industry's advertising campaigns were ubiquitous. Come to Marlboro Country. On television and billboards. And we're seeing the same thing with sports betting. It's the same game. I mean, in many ways, it's the same game. 40 years ago, Professor Daynard and his team at the Public Health Advocacy Institute in Boston famously took on and beat big tobacco by arguing that tobacco companies knowingly marketed addictive products. Now, nobody ever died from an alleged danger. You only die from a real danger. These are products that are extremely hazardous. They presumably could have saved the lives of a tremendous number of their customers. The word legend gets thrown around way too haphazardly. Professor Daynard is a legend. He brought public health approach to tobacco. For years, cigarette ads promising a sexy or rugged lifestyle were everywhere. Their goal? To get you to try them. Decades later, Professor Daynard and his team argue that similar tactics are being used by the online sports betting industry. DraftKings, you're telling me that you're boosting same game parlays? Sports gambling companies often use a different strategy to get you started. The promise of free money. But everyone gets a free bet? In a lawsuit filed in December, the Advocacy Institute took aim at DraftKings for what it described as promotions that suggested new users would get a $1,000 bonus for signing up. What DraftKings failed to mention, the lawsuit claims, is that users would have to deposit nearly five times that amount 
and then place $25,000 worth of bets within 90 days to be eligible for it. And when it's all done, you don't get $1,000. You get a credit for more betting. The new user is instead statistically likely to lose money by chasing the bonus. The whole point is to get people out. In a statement to CNN, a DraftKings spokesperson said the company, quote, takes consumer protection and responsible gaming seriously and that it respectfully disagrees with the claims and allegations made by the Public Health Advocacy Institute. The spokesperson told CNN that DraftKings advertisements are, quote, detailed, clear, conspicuous and informative. What I'm seeing here with the sports betting companies is uh, the very same thing I was saying with the tobacco companies. Online sports betting has exploded since the Supreme Court paved the way for its legalization in 2018. In the first five years, guys, the Supreme Court paved the way for it to be legal in 2018. And look at what they're doing. They're trying to turn your children, you, into degenerate gamblers. They're using uh, Kevin Hart. They're using Tom Brady. Look at what they're doing, man. You should look at casino crypto because it's going to be a lot of degenerate gamblers all over the world. And I'm not, you know, celebrating that, but might as well make money off of it. That's all I'm saying. Let's keep it going. Here's following the court's decision. Americans bet more than $220 billion and the ad spending has followed with hundreds of millions spent by the industry each year. Numbers that trouble experts like Harry Levant, a former gambling addict turned licensed therapist. You cannot watch a sporting event with your 14-year-old son or daughter without being bombarded at all hours with gambling advertising and talk of gambling. What we're doing is normalizing an addictive product. On its website, DraftKings says it does, quote, everything possible to prevent gaming-related problems. Users can voluntarily set limits on themselves, and ads for DraftKings mention gambling hotlines and that its products should be used responsibly. I have a patient who gambled while they were in the shower. People who are struggling with gambling are chasing action. Gambling companies are promoting the chasing of action. In 2013, gambling disorder was reclassified by the American Psychiatric Association as an addiction, thus putting it in a similar category as opioids, heroin, and yes, nicotine. That's a bad yeah, bad I'm just starting yeah. The single best way to treat gambling disorder is to prevent the harm in the first place. But curbing the promotion of online sports gambling doesn't mean Professor Daynard and his colleagues want to get rid of online sports gambling altogether. Yeah, which is not our goal. Gambling is not the problem. The problem is how government is presently permitting gambling to be distributed and marketed and promoted. And we stop right there. I just want y'all to see, guys, gambling crypto, gambling crypto is going to be big, right? So you listen, I'm just saying you might as well get in and, and, and get the benefits, right? Listen, man, it's a problem and it, it's going digital, it's going to the blockchain, right? It's going to the blockchain. Yo, check it out, man. Um, and somebody just mentioned this in the chat. Look at what people are doing, man. This is an unfortunate story. Um, and um, I'm I'm sorry if this is true. Um, I hope it's not true. I hope it's a rumor. But um, yeah, listen, this is what it is. Check it out. Well, here's a name we haven't spoken in a very long time. Bruno Mars is back in the headlines. And apparently he owes MGM, the casino, $50 million. And there's more details as to what happened to his group with Anderson Chat. So I was literally just saying a few weeks ago, I was like, I haven't heard anything new from Bruno Mars. I haven't seen him. I haven't heard any new music. Well, he's back in the headlines and not for so many good things. So apparently he's supposed to be, you know, coming back to Vegas. But before we get into that, let's talk about what News Nation now is reporting in regards to allegedly some issues that Bruno Mars has with gambling. They write this, is Bruno Mars enjoying the MGM partnership a bit too much? The singer who was once supported himself as a professional poker player 
has been known to rack up large debts at tables, but a well-placed Vegas insider said he owes millions to MGM from gambling. His debts have gotten as high as $50 million. Jesus Christ, man. $50 million. $50 million. Guys, 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 guys. Y'all need to get, um, you know. Wait, hold on. So, yeah, man. So, uh, pretty much, this dude is, is uh, you know. This dude is is pretty much the one of the reasons why I think you guys should invest in um you know these gambling coins, these gambling cryptocurrencies, right? Now, I would never tell you what to do. I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. But I'm just saying your man's um your man's is it it is what it is your man's is is you know this is what it is so that is why i look at gambling coins i look at the vice coins because i'm like those are going to make money because people always want to gamble people always want to gamble right so that's what it is right so i just had to put that out there just had to put that out there right so um hold on one sec hold on one sec um let me uh since we got a lot of people up in here hold on uh one second crypto man let me uh go ahead and do my little shameless plug real quick before we go into the next part one second So, guys, you already know, um, I'm gonna put up the sign for the, I'm gonna put up the sign for the, uh, for the, um, the new merch. You know what I'm saying? It's like, um, I'm gonna ask which ones y'all want. But, uh, before we go in to, uh, the next part of the, the program, I just want to say, make sure you pick up one of my crypto heroes shirts man show that support greatly appreciated pick up that you know ethereum hero right make sure you pick up that ethereum hero that's what it looks like on the shirt or pick up that bitcoin hero there you go hold on boom there you go the the bitcoin hero right here that's what it looks like on the shirt and then of course that trx let's go that's one of my favorite coins shout out to justice son and them over there that trx and then of course your favorite it seems like this is you guys favorite the xrp hero so it seems like a lot of you guys like this one better than all the others so you know but listen pick one of those up or pick them all up man let me know. Like, I greatly appreciate that. Let's go. So thank you guys for the support already. And for those who haven't, make sure you get up there, you support, get one of those shirts. Let's go. Right? I see people saying Casper or Pepe Hero, but, um, you know, I'm going to put up a couple coins. I'm going to do a poll. And whichever ones uh, you guys, you know, the most gets the most votes, that'll be the next shirt that I'll put up. Right? So I'll probably put that up tomorrow, right? So let's go. Let's go, family. So let's keep this going, man. Let's keep this going. Um, so guys, you already know that they don't want you guys to have financial freedom. They don't want you to have financial freedom. And we know that they are willing to do a lot of things to make sure that that doesn't happen, right? They they do a lot of things to make sure that that doesn't happen, right? So with that, um, you know, let let me show you, let me give you an example, right? Listen, 
they're capable of terrible things. Check this out. I'm pretty sure y'all already heard about this, but this is the type of shit, this is the lengths that th they are willing to go to to stop you from speaking truth, right? So here we go. Check this out. This morning, police in Charleston, South Carolina, tell NBC News they are aware of the death of a former Boeing employee turned whistleblower. 62-year-old John Barnett found dead on Friday from what the coroner calls an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. So this is my uh, retirement plaque. Barnett retired from Boeing in 2017 after working as a quality manager for more than 30 years. Since his departure, he has taken legal action against the company, claiming he was retaliated against for raising safety issues internally, issues that Boeing denied at the time. Back in 2019, Barnett sat down with Today describing a haphazard safety culture at Boeing. From day one, it's just all been about schedule and hurry up and just get it done, push the planes out. We're behind schedule. You know, we don't have time to, to worry about issues that y'all bring up. In 2017, the FAA released a review upholding many of Barnett's concerns with regards to his sudden death. The company released a statement writing, we are saddened by Mr. Barnett's passing and our thoughts are with his family and friends. Production standards at Boeing are under intense scrutiny following a series of troubling incidents involving Boeing planes. The latest on Monday when a 787 from the South American airline Lantum apparently dropped abruptly mid-flight from Sydney to Auckland, injuring at least 50 passengers and crew members. The airline says it's unclear what caused the strong movement on the flight. So I just wanted to show you guys, this dude risked his life to tell the truth about the fact that a company was cutting corners and playing with people's lives, right? Um... Listen, it's a lot of things that you can bullshit and cut corners with, but with vehicles and aircraft, that that that's just a place that you should not be allowed to cut corners, right? Um, you know, that just should not be a allowed. That should not be allowed, right? So um with that, um it's just to show you the lengths they're willing to go to to conceal their, you know, uh, the things that, that they don't want found. And they're also willing to do that in terms of, you know, keeping people from having financial freedom. Right. So you, you see that. And then um, you guys, of course, remember this because you you guys told me about this initially. So check this out. The stories that are spinning, and then you hear a story that comes out uh, that three uh, crypto billionaires died. I don't know if you saw that one or not. If you want to pull that up, go a little lower, zoom in and go a little lower. Three crypto bosses died in recent weeks. I think these guys were all uh, billionaires. Uh, Nikolai Musherian, 29 years old. Tian Tian Kulander, 30 years old. And Vyacheslav Turan, 53 years old, all of a sudden, they all die within a week. It's kind of weird. Do you know what countries they're from? I mean, it's all over the place. One is Russia. You know, anyways, you can kind of see where these stories uh, are coming from. Russian entrepreneurs are one of them. You know, the causes of vets are helicopter, stay at the top, stay at the top. I was reading it. Helicopter crash while sleeping and drowning. Kind of weird. Helicopter crash while sleeping and drowning. Those are the three different. Those individuals. are the three, which kind of that's a little, little weird. Helicopter so one crash near while Monaco and drowning. And then, yeah. So, so, so you guys see why is this happening? Because they weren't supposed to, uh, <laughs> manual dog say, I remember those tragic accidents. Because these guys were not written into the script. They weren't supposed to have financial freedom. There are gatekeepers in those systems. And that wasn't supposed to happen for them. So they're willing to erase them from the board because that's not supposed to happen for them. They set up a bunch of different, you know, avenues and, and, and rituals and shit that you have to go through to get to those levels. And basically with cryptocurrency, a lot of people were able to skip that bullshit and they were just able to get their financial freedom. So that is what I believe. Like I said, I'm a conspiracy theorist. I have a lot of different theories as to why some bullshit would happen. You know what I'm saying? 
Um, so so this is what I'm saying is like they will go to these lengths to ensure that you don't get financial freedom. They will do that, right? And 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 with that said, we still keep fighting for what we know belongs to us, right? So let's keep it going, man. Let's keep it going, man. Let's keep it going. So, guys, this is the last train leaving. This is the last train leaving. Do not get left behind. And let's bring this up. Let's go, family. Today, Ether's losses pile up as the cryptocurrency adds to its weekend sell-off. Prosecutors argue Sam Bankman fried should be sentenced to as many as 50 years in prison, and Jason Urban, global head of trading at Galaxy, reacts to Bitcoin's retreat from new all-time highs. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Talia Kaplan. Bitcoin continuing to move lower to kick off the week. As of noon Eastern, Bitcoin dropped further below $70,000 to the $67,000 level, adding to a retreat that started on Friday. And Ether fell nearly 3% to $3,500. Solana, however, jumped more than 4%, trading above $200 for the first time since November 2021, thanks in part to growing excitement and trading around meme tokens listed on the platform. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. Standard Chartered thinks the excitement around Bitcoin ETFs and recent highs could drive Bitcoin to $150,000 by the end of the year. The bank's analyst, Jeff Kendrick, said in a note Monday that he's raising the bank's estimates for the cryptocurrency from $100,000 thanks to, quote, more rapid pass-through from ETF inflows to the BTC price to date. You guys see that? I'm telling you, this is the last train leaving do not get distracted by the dips do not get distracted by the dips this is the last train leaving family and you should be on board you see what these dudes are projecting you see how they are thinking this is the last train leaving make sure all of your finances are in order. Make sure your portfolio is where you want it to be because at this point, you are going to be riding the wave. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. I see you, Star Platinum. Yeah, I, I, I like that chick. I, she has this uh, sexy mother look. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know... You get invited over to your boy's house and that's his mom and shit. And, you know, it just end up in some porno situation. I like that chick. Let's go. <laughs> so, yeah, man. So, um, yeah, um, they're talking about that. They, they raised theirs to one hundred and fifty thousand. I played a video for you a couple of uh, days ago where um, somebody revised theirs to two hundred thousand. Right. So, guys, I think we are about to see one of the greatest runs ever. This is why we don't sweat the small stuff. Bitcoin does a little retracement. Crypto does a retracement. We don't we don't get upset about that. Right. We don't get upset about that. Um, You know, so this is what they're talking about. This is what analysts are talking about. So while people are trying to convince you to get out and to stay out of crypto and all of this stuff, this is what they're doing on this side. Again, if you are in crypto like we are, shout out to the crypto gang. If you in crypto like we are, congratulations, right? If you're in like we are, congratulations, because that means that you are definitely part of the 1%. At the very least, you'll have hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? At the very least. But congratulations, you're in. Um, I basically anybody who misses this run, I feel bad for them because because this is it. This is this is this run is going to be one of the greatest crypto bull runs in the history of the world, man. You will never see this again. After this, there will be nothing else because crypto is going to be so high. The average individual will never be able to touch it. 
you will see a a a actual caste system like in India, right? Where people they exist on the level of the caste they were born and they will never be able to switch out. They will never be able to go um, above to another level. They will always be at the level that they're at. That is what you are going to see. Let's go, family. He went even further, saying that Bitcoin could hit $200,000 by the end of 2025. Now, Standard Chartered isn't the first to predict 200K Bitcoin on the horizon. Our very first guest on the show ever, Tom Leah Funstrat, predicted 200K Bitcoin by the end of 2022. Of course, that was before the collapse of Terra Luna and FTX. More recently, Lee forecasted that we would see $150,000 Bitcoin within the next 12 to 18 months. Next, prosecutors say Sam Bankman fried should face 40 to 50 years in prison. In a Friday court filing, U.S. attorneys for the Southern District of New York said that sentence is necessary given the multi-billion dollar fraud perpetrated by the former head of FTX. For context, that's less than half of the 110-year maximum SBF could face. Still, prosecutors said that their suggested sentence is appropriate given the extraordinary dimensions of his crimes. Now, keep in mind, when Bernie Madoff did this, they wanted him in prison forever. Everybody hated him. You know, they they you know, they they wanted his blood, right? But with Sam Bankman free, you don't see none of that hype, you don't see none of that hysteria. Why? Because Sam Bankman free stole from poor people. See, that's okay. That's allowed. Bernie Madoff stole from rich people. That is not allowed. It's just like the the young lady from Theranos, right? She stole from rich people. That's why she got 12 years, right? Which was pretty good for for the amount that she stole. She got 12 years. And you know she got sent to, you know, club fed, you know, it was like it's probably like a halfway house, right? But um when you steal from rich people, that's when you get hit with punishment. When you steal from poor people, it's cool. So they throwing out 50 years. But I doubt if the dude gets five to six years, and I'm pretty sure he'll he'll uh, be very comfortable, right? What do you guys think? You think they're going to give him 50 years? What do you think? There is no people with pitchforks there's nobody talking greasy about this dude none of that you think they're gonna give him 50 years or you think um the government is just throwing that out there to make it seem like when the judge do them dirty oh see we fought we wanted that but they didn't give it to us right so let's go shout out to my brother and my family face facts he says oh hold on uh, my man James Young said one year suspended sentence. He probably will get that, James Young. He probably will get that. Face Facts says after a continuing family court battle, I had to liquidate all my crypto, but I got back in when the market was down, waiting for the bull run. Oh, Face Facts, I'm sorry you had to do that. Um, I'm hoping that you 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 got to the level or past the level you were at before. Um, and I'm glad that you did get back in, man. Um, sorry to, sorry to hear that you had to do that, man. Sorry to hear about that. Right. All right, man. Let's keep this going. Let's keep it going. All right. Sentencing on March 28th and can still appeal his conviction. Last, Starbucks is giving up on its NFT rewards program. On Friday, the company announced it was ending Starbucks Odyssey beta, saying it, quote, must come to an end to prepare for what comes next. As such, the program will close on March 31st. And for those who still want to trade stamps, as they're called, those will transition over to NFT platform Nifty Marketplace. Now, Starbucks launched Odyssey back in December 2022 as a way to bring Web3 technology to the coffee chain's rewards program. All right, back to markets for our main story. As Bitcoin has been retreating from new all-time highs, I spoke with Jason Urban, global head of trading at Galaxy Digital, to find out why. 
He also reacts to continued demand for Bitcoin ETFs and explains how Galaxy's product compares to the others trading here in the U.S. Let's start off by talking about markets. For two weeks, Bitcoin had been hitting fresh records, reaching an all-time high of $73,679 last Wednesday. That's according to Coinmetrics. Then on Friday, Bitcoin retreated sharply, dropping below the $70,000 level and has been hanging out there since then, trading at the $67,000 level just before noon. So what do you think is behind the drop? You know, I think this is some natural consolidation. We've had quite a run. And so your people have been watching the inflows to the ETF. It is certainly, you know, one of the most successful ETF launches in history, if not the most successful. And so people are monitoring that, they're watching it. Um, and because of that, you get people starting to game things. We've had quite a run. It's not unusual when you've had something like this to have a little bit of consolidation. And quite frankly, it's have, it's healthy. It's something that, you know, we look at and we're, 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 we're confident in where we think this is going, you know, over the next six months, but a little bit of retracement is okay. And so we will, we'll see some more price discovery here. And then, you know, hopefully it's, uh, it, it's back to the, back to the races. So you guys see what he's saying. He's saying, don't get distracted. Don't get fooled. Don't think that because you're seeing a little retracement that this is it. We just seeing a little consolidation, a little correction, and then we'll get back on this grind, right? So that is what the gentleman is saying. Don't be the one that misses the train because, unfortunately, a lot of people are going to miss that train, right? So don't fall for the hype. Don't fall for the bullshizer. Don't do it, right? So let me bring up the next one. Hold on. There we go. All right. Let you see a little bit of this. We are so f that you're going to have to take risk, but we've been given the gift. That whole retirement crisis video that I did way back when I said, listen, the gift is crypto. That was 2016 or something. And that gift is the gift that keeps on giving. It is everybody's chance to get ahead. It's so important that you don't mismanage the opportunity. Many people did that in the last cycle, and I'm trying to help people this cycle. Own the main assets. Don't trade around. Don't have FOMO. Don't, do, don't use leverage. Just hold it. Just give yourself 10% of your bag or 20% if you're really a true degen to allow yourself to invest and lose money and try and make money in the hundred X's, but don't touch your other stuff. Over. Do you hear that? Guys, they telling you, hold, do not touch your other stuff. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I, I believe in taking profit, but you have to understand what you have and let that shit grow to astronomical numbers. You hear what this man is saying. He is a big owner of Bitcoin. He is basically saying, hold that shit. Cause in a minute it's going to be worth so much more. So if you got Bitcoin, you're going to get ready to watch that shit go to a hundred K man and above and beyond. So that's the mindset that you have to have, right? Let's keep it going. Past year, Real Vision CEO and co-founder Raul Pal has had one important piece of advice for investors. How to get ahead of what he calls the fourth industrial revolution or the exponential age. According to the macro guru, he realized the importance of the new age when he noticed a few things. One, central banks were printing more money than we ever thought possible. The reckless money printing from the Federal Reserve and its counterparts inflated asset prices into a fake bubble. Two, the pandemic accelerated the adoption of at least 10 technologies, including e-commerce, delivery robots, autonomous driving, video conferencing, and telemedicine. Pal also realized that when you change the denominator into the Fed balance sheet, none of these technologies are actually in a bubble. It just seemed so because the dollar has significantly lost value. 
His conclusion from all this observation was that the price valuations of technologies would continue to grow exponentially over the coming decade. This is why he has been telling investors to get ahead of this revolution before it hits fully and prices are off the charts. What have we been talking about, guys? What have we been talking about? There is going to be a day very soon where you will not to be able to afford one coin in the crypto market. Don't get it twisted. A lot of cryptocurrencies are going to die off, right? A lot of cryptocurrencies are going to die off. But the ones that remain, are, the prices are going to be so astronomical, you are not going to be able to afford to buy one of them. It'll be a minute fraction of, a, of what it costs, right? Shout out to Raphael Williams. He said, what up, future millionaires? What up, family? Appreciate you being here. As always, brother, thank you for coming through. And thank you for the super chat, man. Appreciate you, right? So what have we been talking about this whole time? We have been talking about making sure that you get in before it is too late. Don't fuck this up, gentlemen. Don't fuck this up. Let's go. Keep it going. All right. Let's bring this next thing up. Here we go. We've seen initiating a crypto rating this week with a bullish call for the sector. Analysts at the firm expecting the total crypto market cap to reach 7.5 trillion dollars by 2025 joining us right now is crypto.com ceo chris Mesurek. Uh, Mesurek, good morning to you let's let's start Thanks here if it, if 7.5 7.5 trillion dollars what is the current market cap of crypto right now bitcoin is what about 1.5 about that yes so we are looking at roughly 3xing the entire market uh, according to the analysts over a period of mm, say 18 months so guys, they think that the crypto market is going to reach $7.5 trillion this year. The entire crypto market will be worth $7.5 trillion this year. Which is fucking bananas, by the way. Right? And then, of course, this is the CEO of Crypto.com. And you guys remember... um. I said, you should probably, you know, not this one specifically, but find one that works for you. And you should probably own some coins in a crypto exchange, right? Because um, you think Binance is going to be the only crypto exchange that, that's at $500, $600 a coin? What you guys think? You think Binance is the only one that's going to do that? Look, it might be crypto.com. It might be. Uh, you know, um, clever. It might be um, uh, what's the, another one? Atomic Wallet. They have a coin, right? So, you know, I can't tell you which ones to get, but I would say that you definitely might want to look into um having, you know, you might want to look into having uh some coins that that belong to an exchange, right? Because they might be worth a lot of bread. Oh, yeah. And Uniswap. Yeah. Uniswap is another good one, too. Right? So, yeah, man. It's, it's, it's getting crazy out here. Let's keep it going. And, and we've been talking this morning um, and really all week or maybe in the last couple, several weeks. Obviously, Bitcoin's been on this remarkable run, as has Ethereum and so many of the other currencies we can discuss whether they should be described as currencies or what they should be described as. But when you see this type of move, how much of this is, is literally just a supply demand issue that's being created by the halving of Bitcoin, but maybe more importantly, the ETF market? And how much of it is something else, meaning it has to do with what you think the Fed is going to do or what the economy is doing or what the NASDAQ is doing? I think the move is predominantly driven uh, by the uh, inflows from uh, the Bitcoin ETFs. Uh, this is a very successful product, and you know, there is a, a problem of supply side. So it has to be reflected in the price. 
What do you make of this this move down, though, even in the past couple of days? What is it, what is that suggestive of? I think it's a healthy move, uh, removing some of the leverage that built, is built up um, in, in the system. And, you know, what we want to avoid is we want... You see the consistency of everybody saying, yo, I think the consolidation is a good move, right? They're not... They're not worried about it. They're not emotional about it. They're like, yo, I think it's a good move. I think, you know, that it's consolidating, it's getting its bearings together, and it's going to be back up. So that's what it is. Let's go. Let's go, family. This is what it is. We are doing the damn thing. Let's go. I think we are doing the damn thing. So everybody, it feels like, yo, this is normal. They're not emotional. Nobody thinks it's the end of the world. Nobody's talking about it like it's the end of the world. Guys, we are right where we need to be, man. We are right where we need to be. This is everything that we have been working towards, right? So you see, everybody is it. This is the CEO of crypto.com. Guys, um, I own uh, Kronos. I own Kronos and um, I stake it as well. Um, I think it's going to be very big. Look, I would not be surprised if if Crypto.com starts doing um, numbers like, like Binance. I would not be surprised, right? Um, I also have Clever, um, another exchange coin. Um, I think that's going to start making noise soon, right? Um, it's very low now, but I think it's going to make noise. But I like getting exchange coins because I think they're going to be, you know, those, I mean, they're exchange coins. Wouldn't you want to own the coin that is, you know, uh, basically the exchange is based on? It only makes sense because they're the ones that's providing the cryptocurrencies, right? Let's go. Um, Let's go. <laughs> so yeah man so these are the things man so you know it is what it is it is what it is gentlemen so again one more time before we get on out of here gentlemen make sure you go ahead you support the crypto heroes t-shirts man i would be greatly appreciative if you do they are y'all know they fire so go ahead and pick one up I will leave a post um, letting you guys know uh, which other shirts I'm thinking about. And I'll ask you guys which one you think I should do first. And based on that, I will make the um, the next T-shirt. But right now, we got that Ethereum Hero. So make sure you pick that up if you like that design. Uh, we got that Bitcoin Hero. So pick that up if you're feeling that. And then, of course, we got that uh, TRX, right? Somebody just got a TRX, so shout out to them. Somebody just copped a TRX today. So shout out to y'all. I appreciate that for getting that shirt. I, I think you're going to love it, man, and I appreciate that support. And then, of course, this is the fan favorite right here, the XRP Hero joint. So shout out to everybody that's getting that. Um, appreciate that. So definitely get one of those. And if you a baller, if you balling like that, go ahead and get all four of them. But, uh, I appreciate you guys for supporting it and, and thank you so much. Right. So yeah, man. So I had to bring that to you guys. Thank you so much for joining me for a session. Appreciate you guys being here as always, man. Um, yeah, man, appreciate the super chats. Uh, I didn't get any cash apps today. Nobody cared about me like that on the cash app side, but uh, you know, I appreciate uh all that you guys do, man. So, you know, I'm just glad that you guys are here. I'm glad that you know you are on this train to financial freedom, and y'all already know what it is. So with that, gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and salute y'all, man. Thank you guys for joining me for another session. And I'm about to get on out of here. Enjoy the rest of y'all evening. We out of here, man. Peace.